Hello fun people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants and today we are at my grandparents house shucking corn. So this is my one year supply for corn for two people. My grandparents are helping me because in my genius, I decided to harvest said corn and I have to work tomorrow and it won't be able to be processed basically until my next day off, which is going to be Saturday. And yeah, so that's a week. <laughs> and uh, my auntie said it's gonna go bad so shout out to my auntie Moni for being willing to process this all for me she's a miracle worker she thinks canning is fun and a side hobby so interestingly enough that's what she does with her pastime and I don't blame her because it actually is pretty darn relaxing but let's look at some issues I did have with my corn and what's normal and what's not how to maximize our yields when it comes to corn and how to seed save this is going to be a series on basically start to finish for very specific crops and how we seed them keep them alive during the growing season, harvest, and then ultimately seed save from that batch. So let's get into it. Here's my grandma. Grandma, say hi. Hi. <laughs> she's a little, she has a little bit of stage fright. Grandpa, are you, do you have stage fright? What? Do you have stage fright? Oh no. <laughs> my grandpa says no. That is the woman that taught me how to garden. If you guys want some really hilarious stories about me gardening as a child, she's a lady to talk to you the amount of plants i killed of hers was enormous just an fyi right grandma yeah, i'm a pain still she says so today's video we're going to talk about corn and we're going to go start to finish on corn specifically so some issues or one of the most common issues i do see with corn is a few full court kernels with a bunch of missing kernels in between or kind of blotchiness. Some people think this is disease and this is actually incomplete fertilization of the ovary, I guess you could say, on that plant. So what happens when that is the case? It may mean that your actual silks were disrupted. So if you have Japanese flea beetle or something that ate off this kind of tangled piece of hair looking thing, that's going to cause the issue. The other reason I see this is because the actual corn isn't close enough together. So if you intend on growing corn, you want to do 16 total in a block. So four by four minimum. So the way I did it was I did four deep and then all the way down, I think probably 30 feet and length. This is going to be enough to ensure proper fertilization of fertilization, well, I guess technically pollination of the actual corn itself. The ones that may not get properly pollinated are going to be on the edges of those rows. So the two outer rows are the less likely to be pollinated. Meaning if you have this space and you want to go five or six in a block width wise, you will have you know, more rows in the middle that will actually be fertilized. So if you are having pollination issues and kind of blotchy kernels, that is the reason why. Moral of the story is you have to keep them tightly spaced. You want a minimum of 16 plants. Now each plant will yield typically two cobs per plant. However, in, in colder climates like zone three, I find that it could be only one. So I have one fully quote, uh, form cob and then usually I'll have a smaller one that may or may not be ready to go so keep that in mind for my house I'm doing 54 cobs per person for the entire year which comes out to around 108 plants on the safe side and then obviously you can adjust as needed so spacing and the amount of plants you actually plant is a huge deal when it comes to corn. There's not many plants out there that demand this kind of attention, but corn is definitely one of them. So when you initially seed, you're not going to thin, you're just going to put the plants in at the proper spacing right off the bat when it comes to the actual seeds themselves. They can be transplanted, but keep in mind, they don't like their um, rhizome or that top portion where the roots and the actual stalk of the corn meet to be covered. You have to ensure that those 
particles are actually um, on the surface of the plant. So after you're done that, you want to take into consideration fertilization. Now the corn was grown in an old pasture, meaning there's quite a bit of manure, composted manure in the area, and I don't have to worry about that as much. However, if you are in a garden and you've had heavy feeders in the area before, like corn or sunflowers or anything like that, you want to make sure you provide them enough nitrogen and sulfur in particular. They are heavy feeders for nitrogen and they are heavy feeders for sulfur. So this can come in a synthetic form or it can come in an organic form. But those are two things that you absolutely want to make sure are there. They like the pH to be the same type and they actually do pretty good in soil that is compacted and they do pretty good in soil that's loose and fluffy and they do pretty good in sandy and clay and they're not fussy when it comes to that. What they are fussy about is water. They need lots of water and lots and lots of sun. So keep that in mind. I watered these by nature and then once a week we watered them out on the farm itself so regardless of all that after that is done you have to think about harvesting um pests i don't see many pests with these very often other than things like japanese flea beetles and stuff that will damage the silks um when it comes to control it is a very big plant so any sort of insecticide spray anything of that nature it's so much planted they're very difficult to control so really keep your eye out for potential issues but pest wise there really isn't much out there there is fusarium um and there is other blights that can cause kind of that knobby purple looking stuff if you have that sort of blight you want to rotate and make sure you don't plant the corn back in the same place i know it's a delicacy for some cultures to actually eat but when all your corn looks like that it's not ideal when it comes to storage and so you want to try to avoid it as much as possible again if you have this or any sort of bacterial issue you want to hot compost the foliage every part of that plant or you want to crop rotate preferably crop rotate on a three-year rotation where corn will not be on that soil again for at, la at least three years so once that's all said and done things are ready to harvest and you're trying to figure out when to actually harvest these guys the first thing to do is actually look at the colors of the leaves on the outside of the husk so you can see these are relatively green but as we begin to peel back we eventually get to this white layer and it's a layer or two before the actual cob itself. This is an indication that the corn is ready to go. So you can begin to harvest. They do do okay with frost. My grandma actually said I didn't have to panic and actually pull these off. I could have left them on the plant. She said they actually taste better when they get a little bit of frost hit with them. But I, I was worried about it because it's out in Blaine Lake and it might get one, two, three, too many frost by the time I actually get back out there to go grab these. So this guy is ready to go. My grandpa was actually shocked that these were even grown in my garden. He said, holy moly, these are really good looking corn cobs. What can I say? Absolute pro. When it comes to actually preserving or saving seeds, you want to get the cobs that are completely sun bleached already so this here is a great example of that and you would leave this on the plant so i do have some that are out there you're gonna leave it on the plant and you're going to let it naturally dry on the cob so if the frost hits and it's getting you, you think that the actual kernels are going to you know explode because when our our cells and our plant get the water the water inside of them inside the vacuoles freezes it expands and it busts open just like a plastic water bottle in the fridge so you do want to grab them off if you're worried about frost and then you would actually leave them inside <laughs> grandma wants to just show you guys how perfect this is this is peaches and cream corn is what uh, i got this this is from the west coast seeds so i'll leave the link down below if you guys want to grab this but i'm super excited we're gonna freeze this right yeah we're freezing this is what we're doing with this stuff so inside of this one you can actually just leave this in a warm space you don't want to put it in a cool space so my grandma has a sunroom this would be a perfect candidate to just sit on the sill and dry out completely and then the seeds inside of that is what you would then use to reseed the next year there's no special treatment to this you don't have to freeze them you don't have to um, stratify them you don't have to you know take a nail clipper nothing you literally just 
get them off the cob. You can leave them on the cob till spring, peel them off, and then of course seed them as needed. Keep in mind though that rodents will go crazy for this if they get it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video when it comes to growing corn. The big thing I wanted to get out there was the um, disease prevention for the next year, the soil type, and then of course um, that why that blotchiness happens. I'm seeing lots of like the mist kernels and I know a lot of people are wondering, is it disease? Is it bugs? Is it pests? What's going on? It's because you're not planting the corn tight enough and I'll actually insert some footage or you I probably already have of how tight I have my corn together to get those really pretty these really pretty looking even um, actual husks and I'll show you guys what the finished product for this looks like but again huge shout out to my auntie for saving my butt on this because she told me if I waited till Saturday it'd be good enough for the pigs so and well sometimes I think my husband is a little piglet I don't want to feed him slop <laughs> Anyways, I will talk to you guys next time. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below if you've ever used your elders to help you process food. My grandma loves this stuff too. We just did tomatoes as well. Right, grandma? Yeah, right. <laughs> we have so much food this year, but organic and inflation proof. What can I say? I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.